a Richmond police officer shot in the line of duty. We have the latest on how investigators think it happened, and you'll hear from one of the suspects arrested after the shooting. Tonight in support of the officer and Richmond police. A community mourns the death of a teenager while a state agency looks to see if it was the result of any safety violations. This is WQIT News at 6. Good evening to you. Tonight, a Richmond police officer is fighting for his life. Police say he was shot in the head during an ambush at an apartment. Investigators say this all started about 7 this morning with an attempted robbery outside a gas station on West Main Street. According to an arrest citation, about three hours later, police say Officer Daniel Ellis went to an apartment on Ballard Drive as part of the investigation. And that's when police say Raleigh Sizemore shot Officer Ellis and a second officer shot Sizemore. Both Officer Ellis and Sizemore were taken to UK hospital to be treated. Sizemore was later released into police custody. He and two other people who police say were in that apartment at the time, Gregory Ratliff and Rita Creech, have been arrested. Ratliff is charged with complicity to commit attempted murder, and Creech is charged with robbery. Sizemore is charged with attempted murder as well. We have our top story team coverage tonight live, beginning with Victor Puente. He's live in Richmond with some new information in the investigation. Victor? The man police say shot that officer has now been charged. He's the third person charged in this case. 34-year-old Rally Sizemore has been charged with attempted murder of a police officer and unlawful imprisonment. State police say this started when two Richmond police officers were following up on an attempted robbery investigation, which led them to this apartment. One of the other people police say was in that apartment, Gregory Ratliff, has been charged with complicity to commit attempted murder. His arrest citation says Ratliff led Officer Daniel Ellis into a back bedroom, knowing Sizemore was waiting with a gun. It says as soon as Ellis crossed into that room, Sizemore shot him in the head. State police say that other officer then shot Sizemore. That third person, Rita Creech, has been charged with robbery. A neighbor told us she heard three shots, then another two, and saw an officer performing CPR on Ellis. She said it was obvious his injury was to his head. And we heard two more shots, and you could hear the officer screaming through the roof. Officer down, help now. And when I came out of the building and went around, that's when they, I saw him dragging the officer out. Sizemore is now in the Madison County Detention Center. Police say that unlawful imprisonment charge is because prior to the shooting, they believe Sizemore held several people against their will in that apartment. Live in Richmond, Victor Puente, WKYT. Victor, thank you. We have some new video just into our newsroom of the shooting suspect, Raleigh Sizemore, being taken to the Madison County Detention Center. Uh, there he is right there. The video shot about 15 minutes ago. He arrived in the back of that state police cruiser. Our photographer said he was still wearing a hospital gown at the time. Police say that Sizemore was shot after he fired on Officer Ellis. This is Sizemore. UK Hospital says Sizemore was treated and released a couple of hours ago. As we mentioned, police now say that Officer Daniel Ellis was ambushed while investigating that attempted robbery in Richmond. They say that he and another officer went into an apartment on Ballard Drive as part of that investigation. Late this afternoon, Monique Blair talked to complicity suspect Gregory Ratliff from jail to get his side of the story. Monique Blair joins us live now to continue our top story, team coverage. Monique. Gregory Ratliff tells me this morning after Officer Daniel Ellis and another officer knocked on the apartment door of an apartment here on Ballard Drive, he let them inside. He says he also told them there were not any weapons inside the apartment and there was also nobody else inside the apartment. Ratliff tells me he lied to Officer Ellis because he knew Raleigh Sizemore was inside a bedroom armed with a gun. He says he lied because he was afraid of Sizemore and that Sizemore had threatened him. Ratliff tells me Officer Ellis could... He told, he told Officer Ellis he could go inside the apartment, and once Officer Ellis walked into the bedroom, Raleigh Sizemore shot him. Ratliff says he didn't know Sizemore was going to shoot any, anyone, and once that happened, he says he ran away from the apartment. Uh, it was messed up. Um, I just didn't want nothing to do with it. I got the hell out of there before I could. Now I'm in here on charges I didn't even do. 
Now, according to an arrest citation, Rita Creech was also inside the, that apartment during the shooting today. She was booked into the jail late this afternoon on a robbery charge. And we did try to talk to her in the jail to get her side of the story, but the jail tells us Kentucky State Police won't allow any more interviews pertaining to this case. I'm reporting live in Richmond, Monique Blair, WKYT. Monique, thank you. Now, this whole situation began with an attempted robbery outside a gas station on West Main Street in Richmond. And tonight, we have the surveillance video which shows part of that crime. Hillary Thornton continues our live team coverage with the images that led up to this shooting. Hillary? Good evening, Amber and Sam. Everyone I've spoke to out here around the Gulf gas station on Main Street in Richmond says they're simply in disbelief that an attempted purse snatching here in the parking lot has spiraled into all of this. We had what we thought was beginning a normal morning, and um, one of our regular customers came in to get her soft drink, as she does every morning. Manager Missy McCoy says while the customer was in the store, the suspect, who we now believe is Raleigh Sizemore, pulled around to the side of the building. You can see in the surveillance video the back passenger door starting to open. When the customer walked back out to her car, the van then pulls right up to her and out of the camera's view. McCoy says what you can't see in the video now is a man jumping out of that van attempting to rob the customer at gunpoint. McCoy says the customer fought off the would-be robber and he took off quickly with nothing. She says Richmond police then quickly got to her store and were able to get a detailed description from a passerby as well as pictures from surveillance video. It was that description of the minivan as well as a license plate number that then led officers to the apartment on Ballard Drive where Officer Daniel Ellis was shot. It's heart-wrenching because one of our officers have gotten shot to think that it was what connected to what happened here. We know just about all of them because they all come here. We supply fuel for the city, so it's another is it's so shocking that someone would attempt something here knowing that the police are in and out of here all day and night. Now, obviously, this very hard for the workers here with it all apparently starting here. They say now knowing what all transpired today, it is amazing that that customer was not shot while fighting off the man who police now believe just hours later shot Officer Ellis. Live in Richmond, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Police officers from around the bluegrass have gathered at UK Hospital in a show of support for Officer Ellis and Richmond police. Many of them told us the shooting hit close to home and they're doing what they can to help. UK police blocked off the emergency room entrance, which they say is standard protocol when the hospital is treating a police officer who's been shot. Tonight, many people in Richmond are coming together to pray for Officer Ellis and Richmond police. A prayer service began just a few minutes ago at the flagpoles in front of the Richmond Police Department. This is a live look at that service. Police and firefighters invited everyone in the community to attend, and a lot of people have shown up. The shooting has left many people in the Richmond area in shock. Kara Purdy runs Purdy's Coffee Company with her brother, who's a state trooper. Purdy told us she started praying as soon as she heard what happened. You would never want anything to happen to anyone, but it's a lot closer to home when it's someone that you know in the Richmond Police Department. I think it's harder than anything. Purdy says police officers often stop in the coffee shop, which is on Main Street in Richmond. We want you to stay with WKYT for continuing coverage of this story. You'll also find updates throughout the night on our website, WKYT.com. A tragedy at a Garrett County farm store. Investigators say 17-year-old Grant Oakley died in a forklift accident. He was a senior at Garrett County High School. Today, our Phil Pendleton talked to Oakley's friends who are already planning ways to remember him. Grant Thomas Oakley had just started a job at Bluegrass Agricultural Distributors when tragedy hit. It's more of a shock, really, than anything. It's not anything you'd expect to happen to Grant. The Fayette County Coroner says the 17 year old died at UK Hospital after suffering blunt force injuries when he fell off a forklift and was run over. Bradley Dalton says he and Grant were best friends and members of the Garrett County High School marching band. I don't believe it. I'm still waiting on him to hop out of the band room and be like, why are y'all crying? I'm still here. The Kentucky Labor Cabinet is investigating what they are calling a potential safety violation. 
They tell us that it is illegal for anyone under the age of 18 to operate a forklift. Officials are telling us that this young man was apparently riding on the side of it when he fell off and was then run over. While investigators get to the bottom of what happened, Dalton says he and others have started a GoFundMe page. It took off and in four hours we made $1,000. So I talked to the alumni and we all agreed to raise the cap. And as people donate, we'll keep raising it and raising it. He's just an all around great guy, a guy that would um, always come to you on the road if you needed help. Always had everybody laughing. Abram says they're also planning to paint a parking place in his memory. Today, his friends also wore camouflage in his honor. Grief counselors were sent to the school today to help students deal with the loss. Ramsey Young Funeral Home is handling arrangements. In Garrett County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Police could not tell us if they are investigating the accident. We do have a link to the GoFundMe page on WKYT.com. It has been another unseasonably warm day across the bluegrass, but we are tracking some changes that are heading our way soon. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look now at your forecast. Another very nice day in the books, Amber, across the entire area. We were deep into the 70s yet again. A lot of upper 60s to low 70s still showing up as we make our way into the evening. Perfect evening out there. Got a little bit of cloud cover and again, the very mild temperatures. If you are out and about, it's a mix of uh, clouds and some stars throughout central and eastern Kentucky right on through 11 o'clock this evening. And look at that temperature. Even by late this evening, it is still on the mild side with a lot of low 60s that will be showing up. We're going to be hard pressed to drop very much at all tonight. Uh, a few spots will be down into the upper 50s. That's not bad at all, my friends. Defender Radar Network, no precipitation, so I've thrown the clouds into the mix. And you notice the clouds that continue to be out there across Kentucky, Ohio Valley, Tennessee Valley. Mild air ahead of a storm system out across the Rocky Mountains. That's a cold front that is on the move toward the Bluegrass State. That is the focus of the forecast when I come back. That uh, cold front arrives before the weekend gets into town, and that means some changes are in store. We will break down those changes with a new hour-by-hour -hour forecast, guys. That's in just 10 minutes from now. Chris, thank you. Kentucky's next governor, Matt Bevin, is spending the day after his election with his family while Democrats are trying to figure out how to move forward and regain the support they lost in this election. This morning, Democratic leaders met in Frankfurt to talk about how they lost four of six statewide offices, only winning Attorney General and Secretary of State. House Speaker Greg Stumbo says Democrats in Frankfurt should give Bevan a chance. We should work with him as best we can. Uh, I don't want to close any doors. Uh, in the beginning because I think Kentucky voters expect us to solve problems. And my challenge to you is do not fail to take the high road as we have done to this point. Continue to take the high road because this is the opportunity for Kentucky to be a beacon to the nation. Inauguration day for Matt Bevan and Lieutenant Governor-elect Janine Hampton is set for December 8th in Frankfurt. A Central Kentucky landmark is now up for sale. A look at what could be yours if the price is right. That's coming up.